I have some great toys from the 1920s and early 1930s, including a cast iron flipper and a boat tailed race car, a Kingsbury fire truck, a giant steelcraft Lockheed Sirius airplane with a wingspan of 20 inches that has a propeller that turns as it rolls along the ground, and a Buddy L Railway Express truck big enough to ride on. I didn't buy any of them. They all belonged to my dad, who got them as gifts when they were new. They were mementos of his youth in his prized possessions. They're very well-made, sturdy toys that have been cared for and enjoyed by three generations of his posterity and remain in really good shape. One of his toys had a sadder fate. This Buddy L Model 280A cement mixer was more than a toy. You could actually mix cement in it. It had a mixing drum that rotated when you turned the crank. A hopper could be loaded with cement and sand and water and its contents loaded into the drum using the same crank, but this time using a cord and pulleys. A lever operated a clutch and in one position the crank turned only the drum and in the other it would also lift the hopper into place and empty its contents into the drum. A lever on the other side would pour the cement out of the drum when it was fully mixed. In 1954, when I was four years old, my dad built the house where my family would live for the rest of my youth. He acted as general contractor, but he also did a lot of the work himself. And we all spent a lot of time at the building site watching the work and helping however we could. One day, when they were pouring concrete, he brought out the cement mixer so I could help. I mixed some concrete that became part of the floor. At the end of that day, I did not clean out the drum, and overnight it hardened in the toy and ruined it. I don't believe he ever said a word to me about it, but I knew I had ruined a precious possession of his youth, and for decades afterward, the toy cement mixer was kept around the house, often outside, too ruined to care for, too valuable to discard. Long after I'd moved away and my dad was gone, I would encounter it when I was home for vacation. Each time it would be in worse shape than the last. A few years ago, I brought all the toys to my house, including the ruined cement mixer. I started to restore it around Thanksgiving 2020, when my wife and I were home alone for Thanksgiving because of the COVID epidemic. I had no real memory of how it worked or what parts should move and what should not. Everything was frozen up with rust. Nothing had moved for years. I found some images on the internet of what it was supposed to look like and a description of how it should work. Before you say that I shouldn't have restored it, that even in its sad shape, it was worth more as an antique than it would after restoration, I have no interest in selling it. I want to restore its value as a toy, not as an antique. I don't know anything about restoring old toys, but how hard could it be? I got all the cement out easily, cleaned it up, and disassembled all the parts that I could. I briefly tried removing this rust by sanding and abandoned this as hopeless. I guess sandblasting would have been the best option, but I was focused on doing everything myself at home. I found some chemical rust remover around the house, CLR. I tried it on the mixing drum. It did a great job. So I purchased more of that and immersed the entire thing in a large tub of chemical rust remover for several days. It worked great, and I was elated until I saw what had happened to the gears that drive the drum. One of them had been missing all along, broken off, and who knows when I knew I had to replace it somehow. The other two had been intact, though, but after the chemical cleaning, they were badly damaged, m almost dissolved. Apparently, they were made of a metal that reacted with a chemical rust remover, maybe zinc. One of the big challenges of the restoration from the beginning was going to be replacement of that missing gear, and now I had three that had to be replaced. The chemical rust remover worked great, but of course it didn't leave the surface ready to paint. And some parts of the surface were so badly pitted by rust that after its removal, they had to be filled with body filler putty. All the moving parts were still pretty much rusted tight, so much so that I couldn't tell exactly what parts should move and which shouldn't. 
One that definitely had to be unstuck was the pulley that is used to raise the hopper. There's a clutch mechanism controlled by a lever that moves the pulley longitudinally on the shaft. In one position it engages a clutch that locks it so that it rotates with the crank and in the other position it shouldn't rotate but just to, to turn freely despite the rotation of the shaft. It was rusted really tight. I tried a lot of things to gently free it. Eventually all the moving parts were freed using a 50-50 mixture of hydraulic fluid and acetone which I picked up by reading online, and combined with some leverage from a pair of vice grips. I said I wanted to restore it as a toy, not as an antique, but I did want to get the color right, to be the original color. So what was the original color? The black parts, anyway, the tractor treads, the water tank, and the two upper sets of rollers were easy they were black. I could still see some black on them. The rest of it was described only as gray in the written description that I'd found. I looked at the small parts that retained some painted surface and uh, pictures of every one of these online that I could find that still had some original paint on it and that was less damaged than mine. And the closest color I could get was called pewter gray. I hope this color is right. It's at least kind of close. With it all painted, my remaining problems had to do with the gears. The shafts on which the gears rotate were capped with small cylinders held onto the shafts with pins. It was not feasible to, for me to try to remove these caps in a non-destructive way. I, and I had no way of getting them back on afterwards. So I needed to make the new gears in halves that could be put on the shafts and glued together. Measurements made from the Eaton old gears could only be a starting place. The gears were designed using Mathematica and printed in PLA on a MakerBot 2. I know PLA is not really strong enough for this job, but the, I, my idea is that I make gears debug the design and try to get them work and to fit and then I could get them printed somewhere else for, uh, using the same description file and have them made out of something stronger like nylon. There was a lot of trial and error to get gears that work. I made lots and lots of different gears. Once the plastic gears were made on my printer, installed and working, I removed them and replaced them with ones made of PA-12 nylon ordered from Shapeways. The last part was putting on replica details purchased from Dick's decal on eBay and installing the cord for lifting the hopper. The finished cement mixer looked great and it worked. Dad, I'm sorry I ruined your cement mixer. I fixed it the best I can.